Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Daily Fresh Manna. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are continuing with our theme for January, Conquering Our Thought Life. Our message for today is keep your eyes on the prize and you don't get hypnotized. Glory to God. Let us not be in a hypnotic state strategically planned by the enemy, the devil. Let us not be mesmerized by his illusions. We find that uh, illusions are um, misperceptions that result from tricks, unreal uh, vision, false belief. Let us not get lost in his delusions, dangerous, deceptive ideas, a belief that is clearly false and causes abnormality in those that are affected by it. Oh, my, we must be careful that we keep our eyes on the prize and not get hypnotized. Glory to God. Mesmerized. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let us not be beguiled and tricked by information that is not relative to our purpose. We find that those these days that are professing to be believers and those that are considered clergy wearing a cloth and those that are considered that they are just believers, glory to God, we find that they should be declaring what the gospel is. But instead, they are not speaking the gospel, but they are speaking everything except the gospel. They don't talk about the truth of God, the fact that he sent his only begotten son to shed his divine blood. The divine God of heaven burst his only begotten son into earth to suffer for our sinful state. Redeem us from under the control of Satan and granted us eternal life to live with God forever. He came to reconcile our relationship with the Father that was broken in the garden from disobedience. So we must repent. We must repent from our sinful ways. And you might say, well, I repented from my sins a long time ago when I accepted Christ into my life. But you see, the enemy, you're still living here among the enemy. And this possibility that you're still listening to his voice and you are sinning without even realizing that you are sinning. sinning. So we find that we must come from under sinful ways and ask God to come into our heart that the Holy Spirit would birth us through the womb of God. We become the children of the Almighty God set free from sin. We are set free from sin. We are set free. We are born again, not of the flesh, but born of the Spirit. That's what born again is. It is So we don't do the things that we normally would do. We don't think the way we normally would think, but we have changed. We have to walk in the new creation that is presented to us through the Holy Spirit. Walk in our new life in Jesus Christ's name. Under the rule of the king, we are now under the rule of the king of the kingdom. The king, Lord Jesus, and his governmental rule is over us. We are no longer children of darkness, spellblinded, beguiled by darkness. We are children of the king, the Lord God Almighty. And our father is there as Christ sits at his right hand, interceding for us every day, 24-7. And we would take by faith that we would believe that we are the children, we would walk as children of God and come away from the worldly ways of this world. The enemy can tempt us, but he cannot control us unless you have been hypnotized, mesmerized. 
by the world through social media, through money, people, places, things that we have made gods in our lives without even knowing it. You find many of us are involved with these uh, algorithms, the algorithms. The algorithms are affecting people's lives in many ways. Social media platforms use algorithms to predict the content of what you want to see, and you keep on scrolling, and they give you more and more of it. Many people get caught in this, and what happens is you end up scrolling away from the word of God. You scroll away from the voice of God, and you prefer entertainment. You see, the algorithms know what you want, so they keep sending it to you. This is all a plan of the enemy. I am not saying that there aren't good things on there. You better find those good things and stick with those. Glory to God. But be careful what you are watching and listening to. We hold to thoughts of anger. We find that in our lives we we don't hold we hold on to thoughts of anger because we're not listening to the voice of God. We're not following the Holy Spirit. We're not acting as if we have been born again because we don't know the word of God because we don't read the word of God. We go to church on Sunday and we pray and that's all we do. But the word of God has to be on the inside of us. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Transformation takes place from the inside out. Glory to God. When a baby is born, glory to God. That child is on the inside of the womb. As we are on the inside, when we are born again, we are the inside of the womb of God. And the Holy Spirit at the right time brings us forth that we would manifest the goodness of God, the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, glory to God. We can't hold on to unforgiveness. We can't hold on to negative experiences of the past or the present. We can't hold on to resentment and pain, retaliation. And we can't whine and cry over bad things that happened to us. We must move on. We, that was yesterday. And this, when we do that, when we, we keep uh, playing stuff over and over and over in our mind, it just gets deeper and thicker and thicker, and the bars get stronger and stronger, and next you know you are encapsulated. And it takes all of our energy. It takes our love. It takes our joy. We become like zombies on earth. We don't want to serve. We want to play. We become lethargic, no personalization. We become heartless as we are in the flow of spiritual lifelessness. We just flow with the stream of the world, you know, downstream. We flow with the downstream of the world, and we don't have any power or strength to paddle back to paddle up the other way onto the narrow and the straight path. My brothers and sisters, we must learn how to paddle up. We got to learn how to be strengthened and encourage ourselves in the Lord. Hallelujah. We begin to live day by day, trying to go from one day to the next, suffering, even though there's a smile on our face, and God is trying to tell us something. But you won't stop listening to the negative voices. These voices keep us under Satan's foot. And that ought not to be. You must make a conscious decision to not listen to negativity. Learn how to shut off the TV or the radio or the podcast or turn off the Facebook, the Twitter the Internet, turn the platforms down in the name of Jesus Christ and open up the word of God. Hallelujah. Listen to what is going to glorify God, what is lovely and what has virtue. 
news, politics, gossip, what is the what what the minister did, what what this person's net worth is, uh, who got divorced, the stories, murder, death, war, evil, the state of the world of which we live in is not under our control. But what is under our control is this temple that we are in is under our control. We have a choice of what we are going to allow into our gates. We make that choice. We must learn to separate away from the world at a good distance. Which, like I used to say, use a long handled spoon. You have to discipline ourselves. Don't get too close or you will get burned and carried away by who? The Pied Piper. You remember the story of the Pied Piper? Yeah. Uh huh. He was doing, looked like he was doing good. He was leading the mice. Out of, the, out of the city with his pipe and his sound as people would pay him. People would pay him to get the mice out of the city. So he would, he would, he would uh, play his pipe, and the mice would follow him out of the city. But soon as the people could not pay him, then he decided to lead the children out of the city with the Pied Pipe. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Don't get carried away by the Pied Piper. Do not sell your soul to the world and the things of the world. The world is going to become worse and worse and worse as it grows cold. I'm just asking you not to be spellbind by what you hear and what you see. We must keep our eyes and our ears and our thoughts on the Lord God Almighty, the kingdom of God. We will let society, the world, dictate what we wear. Are we going to do that? Are we going to let the society and the world dictate what we wear this year, what we're wearing next year, what we're supposed to have, what color we're supposed to wear? Are we letting the world in more and more and we don't even realize it? Has he taken over us? Are we in a sound mind? Ask God that sometime. Lord, give me a clean heart and a sound mind. Think. Look. Evaluate. Think about it and see who is controlling the many choices that you make. Who is controlling the choices that you make in your lifestyle, in your behavior, in your thoughts, in your positivity, your negativity? Who is in control? Are we being possibly hypnotized and mesmerized by this world and the Pied Piper? Come out from amongst them and be ye separate. We are kingdom children. Stop trying to keep up with the world and its ways of living and operating. We find in the book of Philippians, we find in the book of Philippians, we see that Paul here is speaking And he is saying, hallelujah, glory to God. And he is saying, glory to God. Philippians 4, verses 7 to 14. Paul says this. You see, I once thought that these things were valuable. But now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes. Everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, 
counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. You see, I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through the faith in Christ. For God's way of making us righteous with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ, and I want to experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. I must press on toward the goal. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, 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 dear brothers and sisters. I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. What does it mean to press toward the mark. It takes consistency. It takes determination. It takes sacrifice. It takes dedication and hard work. It takes faith, belief, determined, continuing on the straight and the narrow path, which leads to eternal life with our Savior and our Father. What is the higher calling that is in Christ Jesus? This is not an ordinary call, but this that you have, my brothers and sisters, is a special call from heaven. It requires going beyond what may be considered acceptable and into a life of total surrender to the will of God in our thoughts, in our words, deeds, and actions. We must surrender our all. For Christ Jesus' sake, our Lord, we say, amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Heavenly Father, for we have the power of your word. We thank you for your goodness and your grace, which you have continually showed us. Today, Father, we declare that we operate in divine momentum. We declare that we consistently operate and function in our divine assignment, and we move in our supernatural purpose whereby you have called us. We refuse to yield to the evil reports or the intimidating tactics of the evil one. Instead, Father, we will run on tirelessly for the Lord, hallelujah, for the kingdom, hallelujah. We will run on for the prize, O oh Lord God, of the high calling that is in thee, that we, O oh Lord God, run this race. Glory to God. We thank you, O oh Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we will continue to press on and we shall reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which you have called us through Christ Jesus. May you bless this day, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. And we thank God. We give him all glory, all honor, and praise. May you be blessed today. May we continue to grow in the love and the 
adoration of the Lord. And may we always know that God is able to do abundantly and beyond all we could ever ask or think as we yield ourselves unto him. Let us not get lost in playing, but let us continue in serving our Father in heaven. We thank you, Heavenly Father, this day that we shall conquer our thought life in 2024 with discipline, with faith, with consistency. We thank you, and we bless your holy name. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Talk with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.